Senator from Charleston, Senator Kemp. Senator Yield, for, 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 for a question. Before, while we're on preemption, sure. um, could you explain to me why we cannot require a pharmacist to dispense with medical cannabis. I, my, my, my impression was that was a federal requirement that we're preempted, that preempts us from making, making that a part of the bill, that a pharmacist has to dispense this. Is that, is that a issue that the federal government has in fact preempted, it, it's that issue? No, it speaks to the license that's issued to the pharmacist. They get, they get a, a, a federal um, authorization license to, to dispense. And so that's why in that context, now you could be a state pharmacist and, and, and not get that federal authorization and, and state, and we're gonna talk about that later on. If you're just a state pharmacist, Perhaps they could do it, but if you're a federal pharmacist, because of that scheduling at the federal level, it would be violative of their of their permit. So right? that's not the Controlled Substance Act. That's right, another that's, act that does preempt right. us on this issue. Right. Of if we wanted a pharmacist to distribute, because if a pharmacist distributed, I'd have no well, issues and, and whatsoever. You're, 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 um, and you're getting and and. I attempted, and, and Senator from Greenville, Senator Loftus uh, mentioned this to me as well, because, and I'm sorry Senator Cromer isn't here because he could add to this as well. He there sure is could, a degree yeah. of, of, of knowledge and expertise and skill that pharmacists have that I would like to have at the dispensing level as well. Um, and, and I attempted to get at that by saying a dispensary had to employ um, a pharmacist, um, you know, tr trying, to, trying to integrate them into that process. There may be another way if we're just talking about state licensed pharmacists, okay? And I think there's gonna be an amendment offered or, or looked at that talks about putting it in the hands of, of pharmacists that don't have that federal authorization and don't want it, that they, they would rather do this. And so there may be a way, there may be a way to get there. I assume, I, I don't, I'm not an expert in pharmacy licensure law, but I assume the absence of a federal license may prohibit you from engaging in interstate commerce, which perhaps, I'm probably very, it's probably a very limiting factor. It would, it would limit yeah. the business opportunities of a pharmacist, I assume. Is that correct? Well, you you've, know? Got, you've got three, three states that have pharmacists dispensing or pharmacists being the ones that deliver the, the cannabis product to the patient. And, um, and I really dug into this because the senator from Greenville, Senator Loftus, was, was, was very hung up on this saying, I want to help you. Sort of like what you're saying, I, wa I want to help people like Margaret Richardson, but I would be, feel better if we had pharmacists involved. And so I'm working on an amendment looking at those three states that have, that have allowed that and placing them under the, um, uh, the Board of Pharmacy as opposed to DHEC. And, um, and, and I don't have that amendment ready yet, Senator from Charleston, but, but it's being worked on. Um, and at some time, at point in time, I will offer that or we can, we can discuss it. Well, I just read in a, that several states, like seven states, have a pharmacy. Even in Connecticut, requires a pharmacist yeah. to own a dispensary. Connecticut's one of the three states. I think the other states you're referencing may be doing something what I'm trying, to, what I do in this bill, which is simply require a dispensary to employ a pharmacist. So they got the pharmacist involved. But what you're talking about is going to actually the pharmacist yeah. being the ones that owns the facility and dispenses. I, I and, would like, yeah, and I would like to know what the, yep. I assume there's some negative business consequences to, the, to a pharmacist's business if all they have is a state license. I imagine it might have to do with inter, prohibition on interstate commerce, which it's hard to imagine a pharmacy transaction that does not implicate and involve interstate commerce. Um, what you but, probably would have if you had this would be pharmacists owned and, and operated doing just medical cannabis probably is what, is what you would have. And, and you'd, you'd see them, you know, they, have to, they would have to take courses in regard to medical cannabis, they'd have to, you know, continuing education courses. 
um, the cannabis product that they would be dispensing is entirely within the limits of South Carolina, so you don't have that interstate commerce aspect to it. But you make a good, you make a good point, because you know, I want there to be quality control at each step of the process, and we've done a good job in the bill, and I'll go over it in a moment, of, of what does a physician have to do before he or she can authorize cannabis for use by a patient. And, and it's, it's an extremely detailed list. And, you know, in-person diagnosis, uh, counseling in regard to other medications. Has traditional pharmaceuticals worked? Have they not worked? Um, what might the side effects be? I mean, it's, it's an exhaustive list. So we got good quality control on that front end. But the dispensing end, or at the, at the end where the patient goes into a dispensary or a quasi-pharmacy and gets the product, um, I would like to have the expertise and the skill of a pharmacist at that level. I, I think that would be valuable. And, and I'm open, and that's one of the reasons I, I, I kind of said at the beginning, I'm open to exploring ways we can make that happen. And I'm going to come up with some language that I think might do it, looking at those states that have done it this way. Um, and put that on the desk at some subsequent point, we can discuss that. But I think that's something we can, we can tackle. It, it is, is, is the federal statutory provision or, or federal reg, I'm not, I'm not sure which it might be, um, that prohibits a pharmacist from dispensing medical marijuana, is it because a pharmacist is prohibited from dispensing a Schedule I drug? Is, yeah, that, yeah. is it, that what yeah. the, pharma the federal pharmacy act I don't know what the name of it is, but that's what it provides. That's right. its provision. And, and, the, and their license that they get from the federal government, if that's what they do, is predicated upon not, being vi not violating that federal law. But, but what we're talking about here maybe is creating a class of dispensers that are state licensed pharmacists that don't have that federal authorization and don't have that constraint is what we're talking about maybe exploring doing here. I'm just curious. I mean, a pharmacist, a federal pharmacist can dispense Oxycontin. Is that right? Yes. Which is an opioid, right? I think it is. It's very addictive it is. anyway. It is. And so, and, and I just perusing the history, I know President Obama, um, he basically, when it comes to prosecution, and there's prosecutorial discretion, you know, encourage prosecutors or even maybe his attorney general um, gave directives to federal prosecutors don't don't prosecute medical cannabis cases why, why didn't they just why didn't they try to ch to change the federal regulations this is a federal this is a federal governmental regulation it's not a trade association that establishes this right, right. why didn't they why didn't they address the ability the, the inability of a pharmacist to dispense this as opposed to a, a, a dealing with it the way that they dealt with it. and Because it, it, we wouldn't be even have, we wouldn't be dealing with this if they had done that. It's, it's, even, it's even worse than that, Senator from Charleston, because for the past seven years, this language has been included in every Appropriations Act passed by Congress. And this is in the DOJ section of the budget. None of the funds made available under four of this act to the Department of Justice may be used with respect to any state, and then it lists all the states, to prevent them from implementing their own laws that authorize the use, distribution, possession, or cultivation of medical marijuana. So, so that's so, not a discretion, that's a mandate. No, no, it's, it's a mandate, and, 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 it's, it's so, and, and that's just routinely now included in the budget every year, that, that the DOJ is prohibited by law from using any of the funds appropriated to it to, quote, prevent any of them, meaning the states, from implementing their own laws that authorize the use, distribution, possession, or cultivation of medical marijuana. Now, now, now that, that particular proviso or budget provision was interpreted in United States versus McIntosh, which is a federal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and it ruled that it means what it says, that, that if you are the DOJ, you can't file any action challenging an institution or an entity that is, that is you know, processing, distributing, or growing marijuana pursuant to a state-enacted medical marijuana law. That's a federal budget provision. I mean, and, 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 and again, while we're on this, Congress, I mean, the federal government is acting up there as if, as if this is legal now, okay? You, you've got, for instance, 
cannabis mergers, okay, they're, they're subject to scru uh, uh, scrutiny by the Department of Justice pursuant to the Hart Scott Rodino Antitrust Improvements Act. They've got guidelines and regs that they give to medical cannabis saying this is the way you comply with Department of Justice antitrust rules. Um, you've also got the IRS, as I indicated earlier, they've issued guidance. There are specific regs that the IRS has issued saying this is how you file your tax returns if you're a medical cannabis establishment. I mean, the IRS is adjusted. They, it's going on. Well, why don't they want, why don't they just change the reg to let, all, that let pharmacists dispense it? They should. Uh, Senator Charleston. Why, why, it seems why, like why, instead why of all these other do, things they did, why does the way Congress to do it? not do anything? I mean, I, they, yeah. they're just completely dysfunctional. I mean, I, I just, I don't have an answer. Um, FinCEN, Department of Treasury, okay? Department of Treasury, um, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. They issue guidance to banks and credit unions telling them how to treat and how to report monies that are received from cannabis companies and get them the guidelines they need to follow. So you got the Treasury, you got the Justice Department, you've got Congress every year in a budget proviso. Th that, that's why you've got 36 states that have legalized this, and there haven't been a peep out of the federal government. Not in the executive branch, not in the legislative branch, and not in the judicial branch. And, and this argument that, that, that I want to put to bed here, there's no preemption. The CSA on its face expressly says, it is not intended. But they are preempting us from re requiring a federally licensed pharmacist to dispense. Well, that's the, the federal government. Well, if the federal government decides to act in a certain way and put conditions upon, you know, its authorizations to pharmacists, they're, they're free to yeah, do but that. But they have done that is right. one, the point. But, 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 the, but what I'm saying is, that the, and, and the case law is clear, in regard to medical cannabis laws, there is no preemption problem. There's not express preemption. There's not implied preemption. There's not obstacle preemption. There's not impossibility preemption. I mean, that, that, that law is clear. So I, I just, you know, in terms of, you know, talking about this bill, I wanted to make it very clear from the start that what is our authority? What, what, what is our ability here? What do we have the right to do? And then we can talk about whether or not we want to do it. But I wanted to start with, with that to, to reassure you all that we can, we can act if this body wants to. Well, the reason I'm... I, I'm inquiring this because is number one, you know way more about this than me because you have focused on this for years. But um, a pharmacy, a pharmacist being involved is important from my perspective. And what a, a pharmacist, a doctor can prescribe, and a pharmacist can dispense oxycotton. They all, a farmer, a doctor prescribing, and a pharmacist dispensing. Medical marijuana is certainly no worse than Oxycontin when it comes to addiction and that type of thing, but it's really frustrating to me that we don't have the ability to require the pharmacists to do the dispensing because I do trust a pharmacist. They're medically trained. They're professionals. I do place more trust in, in it not being kind of someone who's really just doesn't have that medical background yeah, I running a dispensary and and if and that's that's why I've asked this line of questioning because no. to me that's really important to have that pharmacist and that that medical training that professional standards at that point and not the guy who I'm not going to say I don't want to be pejorative but in some instances I've in some instances, you know, it could be, in worst case, it could be the guy who was the, who was the pusher last week is now running a dispensary this week, you know. In some states, that has been the case, I think, the early states who did this. So, a so, lot more faith if it's a pharmacist. That's really why I'm asking this question. I'm, I'm sincerely trying to get a sense of what the playing field is, is like when it comes I, in. You're I helping share, me a lot. I share your desire in bringing the skill and expertise and the experience of pharmacists into that critical moment when cannabis is given to a patient for a medical condition. I, I, I share that, I hear that, and, and I'm working on something that I think does that, and we can debate it. I, I just, I don't have that amendment ready, but you're right to point to that, because it's always made me, we, we have good regulations on, on tight regulations, which I'll talk about in regard to the growing, the processing, um, and we have tight regulations in regard to the written authorization from a physician and what, what has to happen. 
I struggle a little bit with the with not struggle, but but I'm challenged with how do we bring that degree of scrutiny and, and regulation to the actual dispensing? Well, Senator, since there's you you have just expressed a litany of areas of law, of federal law that the federal government has just not enforcing, um, exercising not providing more, guidance. I mean, providing guidance. Providing I mean, the IRS, guidance. The Treasury Department, and I mean, they're providing guidance. Which is not discretion. Discretion, by definition, discretion requires the evaluation of a particular set of facts and circumstances, and then exercising your independent judgment whether I should pursue prosecution of this case or not. It, discretion is not prosecutorial discretion is not directives from above to not pers prosecute an entire class and categories of federal offenses. That is not discretion, but that's what's happening. What would be the chance if, if we were the first state to require a, a, a pharmacist um, to dispense? They, they've basically categorically not enforced anything else that, that is an impediment to medical cannabis. I wonder what the feds would do there think, if we did that. Well, you, you just give me a good homework assignment to not only look at those, those three states that have this pharmacist controlled dispensing process, but, but finding out what have been the real world consequences in, in, in that regard. And I'll find that out for you. And it may be, it may be a, li a pharmacist license being revoked and phar most pharmacists probably wouldn't want to put themselves, their business at risk like that perhaps, but but they've ignored everything else, yeah. um, perhaps. But, that, but that, that pharmacist is an important component, Senator. And thank you for your... I understand. I, I wanna, I'm going to let you continue. Sure. And I, I think my friend, Senator from Edgefield, had a question. You don't? Okay. 